Okay, so if you clicked on this video, you might be interested in cancer screening, whether from a scientific standpoint or wondering if a test makes sense for you. Today, we're gonna to talk about the gallery cancer test. And to be clear, again, uh, I am on the internet. I am not your doctor. You gotta have that conversation with them. My goal here is to help you understand a little bit about the actual scientific numbers put out by the company that makes this test to give you a little bit more of an informed opinion um, as to what this test actually does. Whether or not it works for you and you want to do it is a talk for you all to decide with your own physician. So here we go. The gallery cancer test. This test claims to find 50 plus different types of cancers by looking for some of the cell markers that those cancers would put off via a blood test. Now, cancer screening is one of the things that has uh, improved a little bit, and we have some pretty decent cancer screening for things like breast cancer, for colon cancer. Uh, there are some things that we can test for there, uh, prostate cancer as well. But what we don't have is great universal screening procedures for all of the other millions of kinds of cancers that can happen to us. And this test aims to be a potential answer to that, something that can augment it. Now this test is not necessarily meant for everyone. This is not meant for a 17 year old to run out and just go ahead and test themselves for all the cancers in the world. Uh, this test is actually specifically designed and at least initially uh, planned for those who are at higher risk or 50 over, those who need to screen and might have a higher likelihood of these cancers being positive. So let's go through and talk about some of these numbers because I think the main thing I would be looking for, if I get a test for cancer, I wanna know if it says no, do I know for sure that I do not have cancer? Can I walk away from that test 100% positive and confident that I don't have cancer? And if there is cancer, I want it to definitely tell me so that I don't walk away thinking I don't have cancer and be wrong and find out that later on that I did have cancer the whole time. So being wrong in a cancer test is a dangerous thing. So let's talk through the specific numbers of what this means. It's gonna get a little nerdy, but I think that you're gonna find this to be interesting. So first of all, the test, uh, I'm actually gonna link you from an actual study put out by the company that makes this test. And one of the things that they did is they took a bunch of people who they knew had cancer or were actually scheduled to have biopsies from almost positive, uh, the doctors pretty much were positive and had cancer, you need to do the biopsy to confirm. And then people who had no actual suspicion of cancer, a non-cancer arm. So they had a cancer arm and a non-cancer arm. They went ahead and they did this test to all of these people. And then they said, hey, how accurate was this test compared to the people we, we knew had cancer and the people we, we were pretty positive did not have cancer? And what were the numbers that came up? Okay, so specificity is this. Specificity is a very specific thing. And the, in statistics universe, you have to be very, very um, particular about your phrasing. So specificity is not, hey, if I have a positive, I know it's true. That's not how specificity works, because that starts from the point of view of the test. A specificity starts from how many false positives are there. So it's if I do not have cancer, if I do not have cancer, and, and we know for sure there's no cancer in me, and I take a test, what are the odds that the, can that the cancer test will also say that I do not have cancer? And if the odds are very, very high that it will correctly identify that I do not have cancer and we know I don't have cancer, then that would be a test that has a high specificity. This test is claiming a specificity of 99.5. So what it means is if you walk into the, in the test and you do not have cancer, now granted, you're taking this test because you don't know if you have cancer or not, but if your body has no cancer in it, this test would be very unlikely to give you a false positive and unlikely to give you a cancer scare that was inaccurate. So that is a good thing. The other thing we have to look at is the other side of that, which is sensitivity. Now, sensitivity is if there is cancer in my body, if I have cancer. Now, obviously you're taking this test because you don't know if you have cancer, but if there's cancer in your body, the odds that the test will correctly tell me, yes, there is cancer there and will not give me a falsely reassuring negative, which is a bad idea, right? You don't want to test telling you you don't have cancer if there is cancer in you. And in that area, this went a little bit worse. So the numbers that they were putting out across all stages of cancer is 51.5% uh, was the sensitivity. So that means that, you know, over 40% of the time in somebody who was known to have cancer, this test would say that the answer was no and that there was no cancer found. Now, one of the things that you have to think about is it's impossible to have a perfect test on both sides. 
Um, but some tests are more flawed than others. And if you are someone with more advanced cancer, that cancer would be likely, and the, the mechanism is assumed here, that you would be kicking off more of those cell fragments that this test looks for. And that is kind of shown in their data that as the staging progressed, their ability to correctly identify stage three cancer was higher than stage one. And that kind of makes sense. So that is one thing, but that's not necessarily the, what you're really looking for when you look in these tests. You're looking for, hey, how much can I trust that positive? How much can I trust that negative? Because you don't know if you have cancer going in or not. So you're coming from a different place. And I think what you're really looking for is positive and negative predictive values. So let's break through those. These are probably more useful uh, for a screening test in determining if it makes sense to you or not, because these start from the standpoint of the person does not know. So this is from the standpoint test. This isn't like, I know I have cancer. I wanna know if this test is good at telling me if that's true or not. That's not what this is. This is, I want to know if I have cancer or not. I'm gonna take this test. If the test is positive, how much can I trust that? And if the test is negative, how much can I trust that? And those are different things than the other numbers that we talked about before. So let's talk about this here. So positive predictive value that this one is saying is 44% is what that, so they're saying in their study here. So what they're saying is that if you take a test and the, the test is positive, that you have a 44% chance of that being correct. And that is a big number of potentially false positives overall. The other thing that's going on is they're saying that the negative predictive value was 99.4%. And that issue is that if you walk into a test, you take it and it's negative, that you can generally trust the negative, it's 0.6. So they're saying in 0.6% of people that they would actually miss a cancer and you would get a negative test, but there would actually still be cancer in you. And that would be a, a problem, right? Um, and the same thing in the other direction, if you get a cancer scare or you go through a bunch of exhaustive workups, some of which can be uh, you know, surgical uh, or expensive and you find out hey, I didn't have cancer all along, but this test told me I did. Those are all problems and things have to weigh into your decision-making for if you want to get this test or not. So one of the things that you might ask yourself is, hey, if this is such a great test, why hasn't the USPSTF, why haven't all the government agencies, why aren't the oncology boards, why isn't everybody pushing this test on this? Why aren't all the doctors pushing this? And part of the issue there, I think, is that A, some of these tests are individual in uh, basis, and this test still has a lot of question marks around it in terms of its overall utility. They are estimating, and this is the company who makes the test, they are estimating that if 100,000 people got this test, that they might be able to save 104 lives from cancer that might otherwise die. That is what they're saying, if 100,000 people got this test. So um, in terms of population numbers, um, that is, it's a lot of testing to try and save maybe a few lives because this is just their guesses, right? We don't know. We haven't given this test to 100,000 people. The other thing to think about is the cost of this test. Um, multiple resources online are telling me that this test is somewhere around $1,000 a person right now. So the cost from um, this gallery test to try and save that 104 lives for 100,000 people at $1,000 a test is 100000 million dollars to maybe save 104 lives. Um, those are numbers that are, are pretty big for maybe getting some benefit. And that doesn't necessarily cover in any way, shape or form um, false positives and testing that didn't need to happen. That doesn't necessarily cover costs of things that we missed and, and that sort of thing. So there's a lot of questions about this test. Um, I wanna put out front, I do not have any affiliation with these people. Um, I don't have any affiliation with any of the testing centers. I'm not in their research projects. Um, I don't have any uh, firsthand knowledge beyond what I found on the internet and was on their site about this test. Does this test work for you? I don't know. That's between you and your doctor. Is this a test that I am going to be rushing to order for my own personal self? The answer is probably not. Um, I think that I there's a lot of questions still there for me about where this is going. And you're gonna have to decide for yourself if this makes sense for you, because it sure seems at this point like the marketing still continues and you will probably have the opportunity to get this if you and your doctor thinks it's something that works for you. Uh, maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. If you've got questions, go ahead and leave them below. Um, as more stuff comes out about this, I'll let you know if I find any or if my opinion changes dramatically. And uh, do your best to stay safe out there, y'all.